Okay, this time let's do a rogue movie, of course, creepy version. And first, let's start with a short one as an appetizer. I remember this incident very clearly. It was December 21st, 2023, in the evening. I was at home enjoying my weekend when suddenly I received a call from a friend asking if I was free that night. Because his girlfriend was returning and they needed help picking her up from the airport, I gladly agreed. The plane was scheduled to land at 10.30 p.m., so at 9.30, I set off for the airport. It's only about half an hour's drive, and since I often go there to pick people up, I'm familiar with the road and don't usually get lost. However, that night, after returning on the highway and driving for a while, I suddenly felt something was off. I noticed there wasn't a single car on the highway. But how's that possible? It was close to New Year vacation and the roads would be filled with people returning home. My heart skipped a bit as I thought and I quickly slowed down the car and rolled down the window to take a look outside. But what I saw made my blood run cold. I was not on the highway at all, but a completely unfamiliar territory. I distinctly remembered passing through the toll station, so how did I end up in this strange place? Panicked, I pulled over to the side of the road to figure out what was going on. As soon as I got out of the car, I felt a chill on my left shoulder. My heart raced as I remembered an old saying, a chill down means your protective flame has been extinguished. At that time, I thought, there must be something creepy behind me. Don't look back or I could die here. Just as I was feeling trapped, I suddenly saw a group of people through the rearview mirror quietly approaching from behind. This horrible scene made my legs jelly-like and I almost collapsed to the ground. Then, out of nowhere, an old lady appeared on my left. She had a kind face and was dressed in clothes from the 60s or 70s. She looked at me and said slowly, Young man, why are you here? I was at a loss for words, but the old lady didn't wait for my answer. She continued, Go to the left, people to the right, unbutton your shirt and don't look back. Keep walking till the lights goes out, there's nothing to worry about. After hearing that, I felt a bit of relief. I quickly thanked her and did as she said, unbuttoning my shirt, then got back into the car and hit the gas, sticking to the right side of the road. After driving for a while, I suddenly saw a flash of light and everything returned to normal. I felt a sense of calm wash over me as I recognized the familiar surroundings. Seeing the gas station by the roadside, I pulled in and parked the car. A sense of weakness filled my whole body. After resting for a while, I rushed to pick up the girlfriend. When I arrived, she asked what had taken me so long. I checked the time on my phone and said, Nothing, your flight must have arrived early. But then she showed me her phone. I realized that our phones were an hour apart. I double-checked the time at the airport, and sure enough, mine was an hour slow. Just then, my friend called, demanding to know what was going on. I assured him everything was fine and hurriedly got into the car to head home. And on our way back, I saw the old lady again, standing by the roadside and smiling at me. And when we got home, I told my friend everything that had happened. He asked if I remember what the old lady looked like. I described her, then his face instantly went pale. He said, It was my grandmother. This happened in Beijing in 2006, when my friend and I had planned an outdoor barbecue for the weekend. The spot was a secluded grassy area by a small lake that one of my friends had discovered near his workplace. It had beautiful scenery, a little lake surrounded by dense vegetation, the perfect spot for a picnic. There were three cars in our group, one driven by Mr. A, who also brought along several friends, another by Mr. B, and then my own car. The place was very hard to find. We had to take a narrow asphalt road with thick trees and bushes on both sides. After going down that road for a while, we had to turn onto an even narrower bumpy dirt path. We all drove very slowly. Once we unloaded at the spot, everyone remarked how nice and peaceful it was. As the sun was still up, we quickly got started grilling. The meat was delicious and nothing strange happened. Suddenly, one female co-worker jokingly said, Hmm, what a mouth-watering aroma. Let's hope we don't attract any wild animals. We all laughed, but soon after, a street dog actually emerged from the bushes. In this deserted rural area, the dirty, vicious-looking dog was clearly a street lured by the smell of barbecue. But strangely, it didn't approach us, only staring from a distance then running off. We paid it no mind, just teasing the woman who made the earlier joke. Look, the wild animal really did come. Noticing the dust was falling, we planned to leave. Just then, Mr. A's friend called, saying he wanted to join us, so we sat back down to wait for him. By the time he arrived, it was completely dark out, so we turned on the high beam. After eating and drinking our fill, we prepared to depart, and that's when the real weirdness began. Not wanting to waste battery, we couldn't keep the high beams on long. 
but when we turned them off, we realized just how pitch black it was out there. The cicadas rows were deafening, bugs crashed into us from all directions, and the silhouettes of the trees looked gnarled and eerie in the moonlight, while the previously pristine lake was now an inky void. Us girls were feeling pretty creeped out at this point, so we hurriedly tossed the grill and leftovers into my car's backseat to get ready to go. Mr. B, being the most experienced driver, took the lead, followed by Mr. A, who had four friends riding with him. Since I wasn't familiar with the road, I was told to go less behind them. It was almost 10 p.m. with no one else around at this hour. Driving in the forest, our headlights were like sharp blades piercing the dark way through, making me feel a little spooky. After a long bumpy trek, we finally made it back to that narrow asphalt road. It wounds along like a snake, with such tight turns that if Mr. A and I were in the same curve, I wouldn't even been able to see his tail lights. At points like that when it was just me alone in the eerie road, I felt overwhelmed with dread and loneliness. As I continued on anxiously, I suddenly sensed something wasn't right. We've been driving for quite a while now, yet Mr. A's car remained steadily ahead of me at the same distance before. And this road shouldn't be going on for this long. We should have reached the main road already. I stepped on the gas to catch up, but the gap between us didn't close at all. Was Mr. A also flooring it precisely at the same rate? I found the situation highly suspicious and my hair was standing on end. I wanted to call them but was afraid they'd mock me for being a coward, so I powered through, continuing to drive. But then something even more terrifying happened. As I mentioned before, there were five people in Mr. A's car ahead and I could see their silhouettes laughing and joking the whole way. But suddenly, I realized their silhouettes hadn't moved in for a long time. They looked like five stone statues sitting completely motionless inside the car. Did they all fall asleep from exhaustion? But how could they all be sleeping bolt upright without moving at all? My heart was pounding with fear at this point. I quickly took out the phone to call Mr. A, figuring at least hearing his voice would put me at ease. It ran twice before connecting, but I didn't see the motion of him bringing the phone to his ear. When it connected, I spoke up right away, but there was no sound on the other end. I called out another time, but only to hear a shrill static noise, like a radio with no signal. I checked the phone and had full bars, then I hung up and redialed, but got the same result. I decided if calling wasn't working, I'd text instead. So I break to a stop and text him, please call me back right away. After sending the text, I was about to start driving again, but when I looked ahead, my mind went blank. Mr. A's car had also come to a complete stop, maintaining the same distance from me. And from the rear window, the people inside were still sitting in that same frozen poster as before. If I had more courage, I should have gotten out and knocked on their window to say what was going on. But years of watching horror movies told me that, under no circumstances should I unlock the doors. The car was the only thing protecting me now. Continuing to drive, I didn't dare. Staying stopped, even more frightening. So I turned on the radio, hoping to at least hear a human voice to ground me in reality. But as soon as I turned it on, the same heart static blurred out, even more piercing and terrifying than on the phone. No matter how much I scanned, it was always the same sound. The more I listened, the faster and shriller the static seemed to become, like someone was rapidly twisting the tuning knob. I quickly turned off the radio and switched to the CD player, but the display just read no disc. Part of me wondered if I was encountering a ghost bill's wall while the other part desperately tried to rationalize it. I couldn't take it anymore and started laying on the horn. The long blaring honk shattered the silence, making even me jump. But no matter how much I honked and flashed the brights, the car in front stayed completely still, the silhouettes and moving. I thought if they were normal, they would have gotten out to check on me by now, unless they were also encountering the same phenomenon and too afraid to get out. I was truly at my wit's end, utterly terrified. So I gritted my teeth, floored the gas pedal, inching my car forward. And just like that, the car ahead also slowly crept forward at the same merry pace, like a ghost monitoring me. At this point, I was losing my mind sitting in the car, firmly believing I had truly encountered some supernatural forces. At the same time, I kept glancing anxiously at the back seat from the mirror, afraid some horrible thing might be sitting there. I was starting to worry for Mr. A and the other safety too. If that wasn't actually their car up ahead, but some ghostly illusion, what had happened to them? Were they okay? So there I was, simultaneously panicking while also driving steadily forward, trying to call one of the girls but just getting steady like before, with no sign of her even attempting to answer. My palms were drenching sweat, my foot going numb from the pedals, so I turned on the cruise control and adjusted my sitting position to loosen up my body, turning on all the car's light to brighten the path ahead. From this angle, I could now see the rear view mirror of Mr. A's car. I squinted to check his status, but only to see an inky black cloud where his eyes should have been. Then I had an idea. 
since the road was so winding with sharp curves, what if I threw the car in reverse during one of the turns when the car went out of view? Maybe I could break free that way. As I plotted my plan to try this on the next hairpin turn, a cold gust of wind suddenly blew in through the open sunroof. Hmm? When did I open it? Being summer night in Beijing, everyone knows how stifling the heat is, requiring they say even at midnight. But this wind chilled me to the bone like an early autumn draft, making me shudder violently. With this cold wind, a wave of barbecue aroma suddenly wafted in. I then remembered the leftover was still sitting in my back seat. I don't know what I thought at the time, but I quickly grabbed the bag and flung it out through the open sunroof, considering it a gift for whatever was tormenting me. After tossing out, I promptly closed the sunroof. Then I noticed Mr. A's car was running a sharp bend, disappearing from my view. Now was my chance to do the reversal plan. Afraid to make any noise, I gently stopped the car and slowly threw it in reverse. Good, the front car wasn't backing with me. Then I floored it, wanting to escape from this eerie situation as soon as possible. But just after a few minutes, a loud bang appeared, accompanied by a terrifying screech. I must have struck some animal. But there was no way I was getting out now. Shaking, I just turned the wheel slightly to adjust my trajectory and kept reversing, hoping to use my headlight to see what I had hit. When I had enough visibility from the lights, I saw there was lying a bloody mango dog that had appeared during our picnic. Faced with this supremely eerie thing, I don't know how to process it. I couldn't risk getting out to help. Who knows if this was just a ruse to lure me from the car. But after that, Mr. A's car never reappeared. I just continued driving and in less than 10 minutes, emerged back onto the main road. I floored it, not letting up, until a few hundred meters later when I saw Mr. A's car parked on the shoulder with his lights on. Seeing his car gave me an instinctive jolt of fear, but then I realized the people inside were moving around, conversing, and Mr. A himself was even standing outside having a smoke. Relieved, I quickly pulled over next to them. The moment Mr. A saw my car, he rushed over like crazy. Before I could even open the door, he flung it open and practically dragged me out, frantically asking, Where did you go? Why did it take you so long to come out? Why didn't you stay behind us? I couldn't get through when I called you. Where were you? I was on the verge of tears recounting my heroin experience to him, and asked what happened on their end too. Apparently, Mr. A had been driving along while everyone joked and laughed, not paying close attention to whether I was still following behind. At some point, they suddenly realized my car wasn't back there anymore. Thinking I had fallen behind, they stopped to wait for me. But 10 minutes later, I didn't show up. They grew worried and turned around to head back toward our barbecue spot, circling around in case I was still there. But I was not there either. And when they tried calling, no one picked up. And just like me, they heard the same harsh radio static came blaring through the line, no matter how many times she redialed. Did you get the text I sent you? I asked. He pulled out his phone to show me. He had only received a purely black image with no text as well as no phone number. I asked if anything strange happened during the drive, and after thinking it over, Mr. A said yes. Actually, his car's AC was broken so they had the window down, but the entire time he kept smelling barbecue, which was odd considering the grill was in my car. There were also faint dog barking sounds mixed in, but finding no source, they just ignored it. In any case, we were just relieved to be back into reality. Mr. A analyzed that there were three possibilities for what occurred. One, I encountered some hungry ghosts following me alone, but were finally appeased when I threw the barbecue. The dog was just an accidental casualty. Two, the dog itself was a demonic being, and by killing it, I broke his dark powers, allowing the ghost car illusion to disappear. Or three, I was indeed followed by ghosts, and the dog was simply a street mutt attracted by the barbecue aroma who ended up following me. But my abrupt reversing struck it by surprise, and according to Chinese folklore, dog's blood can dispel evil things. So coincidentally, I brought the hunting thanks to the dog. In the end, we head back quickly, and Mr. A insisted on escorting me back home. Um, I really think the dog wasn't right. First, when it appeared during the barbecue, it just glanced at them from a distance and left, which isn't dog behavior. Second, I don't believe an ordinary dog could have trailed a moving car for that long of a distance, let alone allow Mr. A who had driven far ahead to still hear his barking. That's not something a regular street could pull off. So I feel like this whole incident points to the dog potentially being some kind of local supernatural entity or spirit. Maybe their picnic disturbed it, leading it to follow along. Another question I have is, a scenic yet completely deserted spot in crowded Beijing, so why would others avoid going to a nice place like that? 
It was March 1st, 2021, when the company suddenly sent me and two other colleagues on an emergency business trip to Hangzhou. We had to leave that very night. The company is quite stingy, and knowing I had a car, they told me also gave my two colleagues a ride. We took the Hangzhou Shaoxing Taizhou Expressway. At first, everything seemed normal. We were chatting and laughing with lots of cars on the road, but after 10 p.m., the road became much quieter. We drove for a long time without encountering a single vehicle. The female colleague sitting in the passenger seat and said, It's only us now on this road. A little creepy, to be honest. This highway just opened a few months ago, so the traffic volume is still low. It's normal. Relax. About 10 minutes later, we spotted a tail light on the passing lane ahead. I found it strange and said, Is motorcycles allowed to be on expressways in Zhejiang? My colleagues responded, Maybe it snuck through when the ETC gate opened automatically. However, as we got closer, we realized it wasn't a motorcycle at all, but rather an old bus with one broken taillight. The bus looked extremely run down with a style from decades ago, as if it could fall apart any minute. My colleague and I joked, driving on the expressway with one taillight out, cruising the passing lane, that driver must really be tired of living. As our cars got even closer, I noticed that not only were the headlights dim, they may have just been fog lights on. It was basically a death wish. Then I drove faster, wanting to pass and warn the driver. But just as I was about to overtake, the bus suddenly sped up. I stepped on the gas to keep pace, but the bus accelerated again. Whenever I sped up, it sped up. And whenever I slowed down, it slowed down. Its windows were tinted black, so we couldn't see inside. I eventually gave up trying. Suddenly, the bus changed into my lane. At first, my colleague thought maybe the driver had a case of road rage and told me to keep my distance. But after following for a while, the bus didn't seem intentionally trying to block us, so we just stayed behind it. Short after, the female colleague stuttered. Guys, do you think the bus looks like it's made of paper? It has no metallic feel at all. Could it have encountered something here? Her words gave us all a jump scare in the middle of the night. I comforted myself. Uh, c- come on, don't scare us like that. Under the pallid moonlight, the old bus did indeed look like it was made of paper, with wrinkles and glues all over its body. I feel chills run down my spine, trying to reassure myself it was just a severely beaten up vehicle and not psych myself out. At the same time, the male colleague behind me boldly rolled down his window for a better look. But doing so made our hair stand on end, because at that time we discovered the bus wheels weren't actually turning. It was just gliding abnormally on the road under the moonlight, with no engine noise as well. We were completely freaked out at this point. I switched to the passing lane and floored it, wanting to get as far away from the spooky bus as possible. I hit the pedal floored, but that dilapidated bus sped up again, keeping about half a car length ahead of us. Then I noticed a big Chinese character, Ji, on its side, which is a symbol of a hearse. And maybe with a high speed, the bus seemed to be leaving a trail of paper ash on the road. At this moment, the female colleague started crying from sheer terror. The rest of us were also dumbfounded with fear, drenched in sweat from the conviction we had encountered ghosts. Just then, the navigation announced we were approaching the Shaoxing service area. I saw it as a lifeline and floated with everything I had. Luckily, this demonic bus didn't follow us onto the service area. We finally heaved a sigh of relief. I checked my phone. It was almost midnight. Still shaken, I went to buy a pack of cigarettes to calm my nerves. Then I ran into a truck driver and, needing a light, I recounted the events to him. He said he had encountered similar situations before while driving overnight roads and comforted me not to worry. They usually just follow for a distance and not to harm. They were like street spirits following us to find their way. After that ordeal, we didn't dare continue driving and ended up staying at the service area all night instead. Okay, that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed this video and give me a like and subscribe. Bye-bye. God, guys, look, look at my goosebump. Look at my goosebump.